This morning, the American Psychological Association demanding change from social media platforms and head turning report detailing what it says are psychological threats to young people. The highly respected group writing in part platforms built for adults are not inherently suitable for youth. Youth require special protection. The APA calling out features like endless scrolling, likes and follower counts and push notifications that it says capitalizes on developing brains that are more sensitive to impulses, social feedback and distraction. According to a recent survey noted by the group, more than half of teens reported at least one symptom of clinical dependency on social media, something families described in today's deep dive into the impacts of screen time last fall. It can be really addicting. They can begin to really hinder your life more than they do help it. Instead of liking yourself, it's how much everybody likes you. The report also noting how the freedom to scroll around the clock has been cited as the predominant reason why adolescents are getting less than the recommended amount of sleep. It comes nearly a year after the U.S. Surgeon General issued a landmark health advisory on social media use in adolescents. We see rates of depression and anxiety and suicide and loneliness going up among young people. And I'm concerned that social media is an important driver of that youth mental health crisis. Uh, this is the defining public health issue of our time. The APA writing there's been few meaningful changes since then, but some social media companies disagree, including Meta, the company behind Facebook and Instagram, which recently launched nighttime nudges to push young people to close the apps and now also allows parents to schedule breaks for their kids on the platforms. Without laying out specific changes, the APA says there must be a comprehensive approach to fully address the dangers of an increasingly screen-reliant world. And the APA says the onus falls on social media companies to protect their youngest users, but parents can help too. Its chief science officer recommends all devices in a household go on top of the fridge at 9 p.m. And hey, it can help adults too. Yeah, unless you have a ladder, because then those kids will <laughs> climb up and just grab it, Emily. They'll Thank find you. A way. Yeah, let's bring in Tom Kirsten. Mm -hmm. He's a family therapist who has extensively researched and written about the impact of social media and smartphones on children and family. Good morning to you. Good morning. None of this will come to as a surprise to you whatsoever. But, you know, just on that point, we could be waiting around forever for these social media and technology companies to do the right thing. They're not going to. It's yeah. really up to parents, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's certainly. I mean, you know, these companies, social media companies, they're in a the business of having people's eyeballs on their products as long as possible. That's where they make their money. So me, when I'm out there lecturing, I have a lecture tomorrow night, I speak specifically to parents and kids, give them the information they need to understand you know, what this is actually doing to kids' brains, their development, their social skills, their communication skills, their mental health. And, you know, I really implore parents, and I try to empower them to take control under your own roof, one household at a time. Well, I think one of the most interesting things that I read in the note was that the brain is most pliable for a child between the ages of zero and one, and then in puberty, which is when the kids are really knee deep into those smartphones. So what kind of damage can be done there? Yeah, so, you know, uh, the young brain, there's yeah. this area called the prefrontal cortex, which doesn't fully develop until about 25 years old. So it renders younger kids uh, more likely to be impulsive and to do risky things. So they can't help themselves yeah. for that immediate gratification, even if they're thinking about what the potential long-term consequences are. They, their brains just don't allow them to do that. So it's certainly having an impact there. Um, and the algorithm, for, yeah. whether it's social media or even smartphones and the ding of getting a text, yeah. it is designed to, to trigger your dopamine levels. So you're basically getting a drug hit, mm -hmm. an internal drug hit every single time. And then we're expecting that not to have a long-term effect on these developing brains. So I, I tell people, kids are, are like basically walking around with a never-ending IV drip wow. right, of dopamine. And all these things target that pleasure-seeking part of the brain. And when that mm. stimuli is removed, if mom or dad take the phone away, I see this on a daily basis at my private practice, kids have an absolute meltdown and crash. You were saying that, that it's, like a, it's like withdrawal. It's, it's yeah. like a drug withdrawal. And you're seeing more violence in kids because of that? I'll have parents call me up, 10, 11-year-old kid. Wow. Uh, kid has 12 holes in his bedroom wall, uh, got physical with the mom. And then the kid comes to my office, and it's just like little, nice-looking kid. And it's literally, it's, that's the withdrawal. Wow. It's like if you take a drug away, we have this balance. It's called homeostasis. When there's an imbalance, stimuli is removed. Bang. You fit, I, you react mentally and physically. I feel like a lot of parents are trying, yeah. and there are movements, and Savannah's part of one, too, and I want to be part of one, to stop smartphones from being in the hands of kids. But sometimes you're up against it because 
they get their school homework on the smartphone or on the iPad and the kid needs the technology or the parent, some parents believe they need to keep up with their kid. Now the smartphone, I'm a big believer that they sh schools shouldn't have phones even entering the school building, but it's really, the problem is really with the parents because it's become sort of like the umbilical cord. They become dependent. But that's a on problem to too. Yeah. Yeah. It really is, but just it's a distraction. When kids have it in their pockets, yeah. During the what school about day, getting assignments and stuff that kids feel like I need it, so I have to have this. Unfortunately, you know, a lot of academics right now is done through you know um, laptops and iPads. I mean, sometimes there's assignments on the phone. But that's but different than a smartphone. I mean, I, I think it feels like the emerging consensus yes. is that you should try to delay a smartphone until at least high school. As Social late as media, the Surgeon General says not before 16. Mm -hmm. And why aren't these schools just banning phones yeah. during school hours? Because I, I've seen in the high school where my kids go, I mean, kids on the, in, the, in between periods, they're checking the phone. Yeah. Recess, they're checking the phone. No one's looking at each other yeah. or talking to each yeah. other. Precisely, and that's what that's affecting. It's affecting their social and emotional development because they're now glued and hypnotized here and not, not doing what you and I are doing right here. And the reason why schools are yeah. hesitant to do it is they're afraid of litigation, getting sued by parents because the parents feel the need to have to know where their kids are all the time. Like I said, it's like the umbilical cord. So some schools have, schools yeah. that I've spoken at around the country. Yeah. And, and the, results, the results of schools that have banned phones yeah. Yeah. is unbelievable. Mental health episodes down substantially, <laughs> test scores up. I mean, the irony that your parent, you know, and I, we all understand we're parents, and yeah. there's no, you know, there's no shame in anyone's game. But it's like when you look at the research like that, you, mm -hmm. you want to be attached to your kid because you want them to be safe. Mm -hmm. They'd be a lot safer at school having a normal school day without a smartphone. Yeah, yep. that's it. There's that's also it. a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of, we could go on and on. I'm, uh, this yeah. is my rant for yeah. today. But there are a lot of gadgets now that are available, either a dumb phone, like mm -hmm. a flip phone, or there's the Gizmo Watch yeah. or the Gab phone. These little right. things where you can text mom and say, hey, I made it here, or I'm, I'm walking yeah. home now, I'll see you in 20 minutes, mm -hmm. that aren't the smartphones that go right to yeah. kids' dopamine center. Yeah, there's one called the Gab Wireless, G-A-B-B. -B. Yeah. So it looks exactly like your iPhone, yeah. right? We call it a dumb phone. Because all you could do is text, make phone calls, and you could take photos. But there's no internet access. Yeah. So if you have a young kid that's the only, your only one that doesn't have a phone, that can you know, ameliorate that for that yeah. kid. And you only text who you're, you're set up so, to be able yeah. to text with. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. people. Yeah, just your, whoever's in your wow. contacts. God, we're we could go fire. on and on. Come we're on. on fire. I mean, yeah. <laughs> on the mommy war yeah. path. Okay, yeah. thank but you, thank you thank so you. much. Thanks, we want to send it over to Al. Get it done, people. Oh, Come on, how hard is this? Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific, on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day, or click the link right here.